was never afraid before you showed up. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top things you missed in The Last of Us Episode 3. It's your first time in a car? It's like a spaceship. For this list, we're looking at the best references, Easter eggs, and foreshadowing from the third installment of the post-apocalyptic series. If you haven't seen the first three episodes or played The Last of Us games, beware of major spoilers ahead. What's the one store you would like access to the most during an apocalypse? Let us know in the comments. An Easter egg tests your might. While Joel is going through the extremely relatable feeling of not remembering where he left his stuff, Ellie stumbles upon a fantastic arcade cabinet from Mortal Kombat 2. You ever play this one? I had a friend who knew everything about this game. She goes on to reference the toothy fighter Melina. While we have a feeling that the iconic character would get along with the bitey clickers, there are more layers to the Easter egg. In the DLC expansion, Ellie and her friend Riley pretend to play a game named The Turning while they're in the mall. Round one, fight. Round one starts. Black Fang rushes towards you. He throws a double punch in your direction. Jump up! There, he overshot you. The arcade cabinet in the episode is definitely a nod to their history. Additionally, there is a Mortal Kombat poster present in Ellie's room during the game's DLC. And to top it all off, the show happens to air on the same network that aired a 2021 adaptation of the bloody game. Did the Mortal Kombat 2 Easter egg help confirm that a movie sequel is coming? Whether it did or not, there's no denying that this arcade cabinet reference went deeper than the fighting game's spike pits. There's this one character named Melina who takes off her mask and she has monster teeth and then she swallows you whole and barfs out your bones. Ugh. The significance of the car battery. I just finished making a truck battery. It's charging right now. Fans who played The Last of Us game might have either laughed or cried about how Joel gets the car battery in the show. In the source material, our main survivor and Ellie also find themselves in need of a vehicle. But to get one from Bill in the game, Joel has to trek halfway across a city full of infected while protecting his partners. Now you help me go gather it, and maybe I can put something together that runs. But after this, I owe you nothing. And that's not the end of it. Joel and Bill also have to push the car to recharge the battery while the infected attack. By contrast, viewers noticed that Pedro Pascal's lead calmly builds a battery and even has time for a shower. The relatively stress-free battery acquisition was a great twist on a big game mission. Needs another hour. They have hot water. I'm taking a shower. And then you're showering. Calling pop culture superfans everywhere. Do you love to argue with WatchMojo's top 10 ranks? Introducing WatchMojo's first and very own party game. Bring your superpowers to the table and fight for your pick to be at the top of the list. It's all the fun of the comment section, but in real life. Outfit upgrades. And the clothing boutique. The boutique? Are we hosting formal garden parties now? The Last of Us show has been rightfully praised for its faithfulness to much of the source material's dialogue and story beats. However, nitpicky viewers could previously point out that the characters' outfits were not quite the same. The third episode resolved that small detail by having Joel and Ellie change into clothes that are virtually identical to their video game counterparts. Although players were usually only allowed to swap skins in the game after they finished the main story, we guess it's okay that the show characters got new outfits earlier. Well, don't you look pretty? Shut up. Additionally, since Ellie got to wear PlayStation-themed shirts in the game, we wonder if we'll see Bella Ramsey rock something like an Uncharted shirt or Kill Bill ensemble soon. Bill's Home Depot trip leans on a popular meme. So what, you were a prepper or something? Survivalist. Years after playing a tough Mr. Fix-It who dislikes the government on Parks and Rec, Nick Offerman played a tough Mr. Fix-It who dislikes the government on The Last of Us. Coincidentally, both characters have tons of musical talent as well, but the biggest visual similarity between the roles came early in the episode. In one of Parks and Rec's most famous and meme-worthy scenes, Offerman's Ron Swanson goes into a Lowe's to pick up vital items. While his cart is full, he completely brushes off an employee who tries to offer help with an iconic phrase. Hey there, is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. The Last of Us appears to pay homage to this scene by having Bill make a trip of his own. Although he goes to Home Depot and the employees there are almost definitely already dead, it's hard not to visually compare the two Offerman characters. 
As an added bonus, the survivor does initially brush off Joel's offer to help with a DIY project. They'll come at night, quiet and armed. We'll be fine. Bill's last wish for Joel and Tess. Although Ellie makes it through most of Bill's final letter, she doesn't read the last portion about her recently deceased travel companion, Tess. I leave you all of my weapons and equipment. Use them to keep. While it's hard to make out every word, pausing on the letter reveals a sad and sweet detail. It appears to encourage Joel to share a specific wine with Tess. Presumably, Bill hoped that might kickstart a romance like it did with Frank. Episode 3 continues to confirm that Joel and Tess never fully defined their relationship before her final sacrifice. If mine brought strangers into our situation, I wouldn't be happy either. However, Bill seemed to hold out hope that those two survivors could openly embrace whatever feelings they had for each other. He and the audience could clearly see that Tess was important to Joel in ways he wasn't ready to accept. Listen about Tess. If I'm taking you with me, there's some rules you gotta follow. Rule one, you don't bring up Tess, ever. A brief but brilliant gas mask nod. How the hell are you breathing in this stuff? I wasn't lying to you. In the original The Last of Us games, having a gas mask was essential for every survivor. The source material allowed the virus to be spread through airborne spores. If a survivor was unlucky enough to go into an area covered in the material, they could easily turn. Help me. My mask broke. Don't, don't leave me to turn. The production may have ditched that plot point to avoid mimicking the Mandalorian and covering Pedro Pascal's face. I need to remove your helmet if I am to save you. Try it and I'll kill you. However, Bill gave fans a nice tease of what gas masks would look like in a live-action The Last of Us series. This nod to a game mechanic perfectly fit the character's sense of paranoia and preparedness. But we won't expect to see Joel borrowing that particular item for his live-action road trip. So what now? We grab what we can. Bill and Frank's romance ends very differently. Love's wounds unseen. That's what someone told me. Bill and Frank's whirlwind romance led to the most significant changes between the story of the games and the show we've seen so far. In the game, we never see them sharing a tender moment together. Instead, we discover that Frank took his own life after being bitten. Who the hell's Frank? He was my partner. He's the only idiot that would wear a shirt like that. He left behind a note saying how much he despised Bill. This message is quickly discarded when it gets to its intended person. While the pair goes through their ups and downs on the show, their last moments together are full of love. Since the two also end up dying at the same time, Bill never meets Ellie, and Joel is the one to throw away the note on the show. If these story changes are any indication, there may be more plot surprises in store for hardcore fans. Either way, the story of Bill and Frank's romance was unquestionably one of the most emotional additions to the overall tale. Look, I was never afraid before you showed up. Hints at Ellie's future birthday. You flying one of those? A few times, sure. So lucky. When Ellie first passes by the wreckage of a plane on the show, she can't help but be amazed at the idea of flying. This was the first hint that the show will adapt one of the game's most emotional sequences. During the first story, Ellie mentions that she'd love to be an astronaut at some point. Joel remembers this small detail and does everything he can to help her experience what it would be like to go into space for her birthday. What is this? This is a thing that took a mighty effort to find. Seeing him put so much effort into her gift showed how much he had truly grown to care for Ellie. Although the duo is still far from warm on the show, we're holding out hope the two will bond over a similar spaceship scene in the near future. It's your first time in a car? It's like a spaceship. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.